area or you do end up joining a gym or you have a personal trainer, the most important thing is to lose body fat. Um, I've done thousands and thousands of diets. I'm not concerned about what anyone weighs. I'm concerned about them losing inches and transporting fat into energy. So if you're feeding your body better nutrients, you're exercising, you're going to develop lean muscle tissue. Now I've seen a lot of professional people say that a pound of muscle weighs more than a pound of fat. As far as I know, a pound is a pound. They're all 16 ounces. So that's a false statement. A pound of lean muscle tissue is much smaller and more compact, where a pound of uh, fatty tissue is not as compact and it's more bulky. So theoretically, even if you developed as much lean muscle tissue as you lost, which wouldn't be likely, uh, you could still be losing a lot of inches. So the main, my main goal is I always weigh my clients in at least every other week, and then I check their body fat. Mathematically, I can figure out if they've lost lean muscle tissue or if they've lost fat tissue. I never want anyone to lose lean muscle tissue. I always hear women, they're always so afraid of getting big and everybody's doing crunches to have this washboard abdominal. But if you do things right, there's no way you're going to get larger. You're going to definitely going to get smaller, even if the weight stood the same. Um, but be concerned about percentage of body fat. For example, people say if I do crunches or abdominal work every day, they think they're going to have a washboard stomach. Well, if they eat wrong and they do aerobic activity wrong, theoretically the stomach will get larger because they're developing lean muscle tissue under the fat they have and they're not doing anything to transport the fat into energy. So you need to do both. You need to eat correctly, do some type of weight training and some type of aerobic activity to transport the fat into energy. So that's a myth as far as women getting weight training and getting large. It's medically impossible. Uh, if you do everything right. You're going to get much more toned, much more athletic looking, and lead a much healthier lifestyle. All right, if I could just use, uh, now I want to bring on two of the guests, Abby Cabrol. She's a 1998 national female pro champion. And um, Abby, I'm going to check your body fat. Now, when you, if you have a trainer, someone's going to check your body fat. There's all different types of gauges. I mean, there's a hydrostatic underwater tank, which supposedly is the most accurate. I like the caliper. It's submuscular body fat reading, so I'm just, it gives me a guideline to see if they're losing body fat by me weighing them in every week and checking their body fat. If, for example, if Abby weighed 150 at 20% body fat and she came back a few weeks later and weighed 145 at 15% body fat, she lost about 5% body fat, which is 5 pounds per 100. So therefore, she lost about seven and a half pounds of fat. She only lost five pounds of weight. So she gained about two and a half pounds of lean muscle tissue. So I'm not really care what, I don't really care what the scale says. As long as I'm being consistent on my sightings and accurate on the depth, I sink, I sink the caliper. And then I'm sure she's losing body fat. That's all I care about. Because then I know she's going to be satisfied because she's going to be getting leaner, harder, smaller. She's going to look better in the mirror. Clothes are going to fit differently. She'll drop clothes size. And that should be your main goal, is to lose percentage of body fat, not just weight. So if you want to, the calipers, they have them anywhere from $20 to, this is a $500 caliper. The caliper is only as good as the tester. So if you do have a, someone testing your body fat, make sure they know, what, they know what they're doing. If you end up wanting to buy an in, inexpensive one to test yourself, that's fine. Just be consistent on the location and the depth of how, how you, deep you sink the, the caliper. There's a lot of electronics pieces of equipment that also test body fat. I think they've made improvements over the years. Years ago, I didn't really like them because the more lean muscle tissue you had, it seemed like the less accurate they were. But I think they've improved them. But in any event, even if they were wrong, it's going to be give you a guideline to see if you are losing fat. And that should be your main goal. And stay on the same scale, same time of day, once a week. Because you can't fluctuate three or four pounds of weight per day. If that's happening, that's simply water weight. There's no way it can be fat or muscle. So a lot of women drive themselves crazy. They get on the scale every day, and you should really, you know, same time of the day, dress similar, and do it once a week, just to make sure it's consistent. And don't worry about day to day because there's no way you can transport fat into energy that quickly. And if you're up and down two or three pounds from day to day, that has nothing to do with fat. That's simply water. So on, what I do on these particular calipers, it, it's based on sex and age. But most of my clients. I consider them be leading an athletic lifestyle, so I, I ignore the age. I put all men on two and all women on seven. And Abby, she, she is a, one of a top female natural pro, and she's done many different athletics in her life, from running to professional skiing to um, natural bodybuilding. 
So in here, here, for example, I'm going to set on seven. Now, when you're testing bo body fat, you have them contract the bicep. Again, this depends on the caliper and the theory they're using. So it, the locations can be different. I, put, I like this one best where I go to the bicep, the highest peak to the bicep, I have them contract the muscle, I sink the caliper. I want to make sure I can feel the difference between lean muscle tissue and fat. When I'm satisfied, I click it and automatically records the reading. Some of them you'll have to look up according to age, sex, and total number and sightings. Just relax, turn sideways, Squit, uh, flex your uh, tricep. Now again, midpoint bef between rear deltoid and elbow. Have them contract the muscle, feel the separation between lean muscle tissue and fat. Let the caliper rest, click the sighting. Go to the shoulder blade, find the bone of the shoulder blade. Go about 45, I mean, I'm sorry, three quarters, three quarters of an inch under the shoulder blade at a 45 degree angle, pinch the fat. Never sink more than a quarter of an inch of flesh inside the pincher, no matter how much fat's there. And then to the front. Now, on non-bodybuilders, you can find the hip bone and you go three quarters of an inch above the hip bone at a 45 degree angle because the layer of fat travels at this angle. I, for some reason, on natural bodybuilders, I like to go between the hip bone and the navel. I just find if a natural bodybuilder, uh, it's more accurate for what I'm looking for. And then again, you just take the reading, click it. Now, in this particular type of caliper, it automatically gives me a reading. Abby doesn't want me to tell you what she is, but off season, she's 15% body fat. And she's in her middle 30s? 37. 37. And pre contest, when she's getting ready for a con contest, she probably gets as lean as, and hot as any natural woman I've ever seen. She comes down to probably between 5 6%. Which that's very, very low, and I mean, it wouldn't even naturally be healthy for an average woman. Um, so, most women, eight, if they can ever reach 18 to 22 percent body fat, that's really an athletic look, and most women are very happy. And you, one thing you gotta realize you don't have to be big and obese to have an obese reading on the caliper. People, when they die from anorexia, when they starve themselves to death, they're all clinically obese. They're what we call skinny fat people. They've lost all the lean muscle tissue because the pounds of lean muscle demands more calories than pounds of fat. So if you deprive your body of nutrients and everybody in this country is brainwashed and starving themselves, then all the body's gonna do is shut down, slow down the metabolism and tell the body to get rid of the lean muscle tissue because they're not giving you enough to uh, support the lean muscle tissue. So when you, when you do do that and you do drop weight, in my opinion, you're, you're what we call a skinny fat person and you could be 80 pounds and be clinically obese. So just because you're dropping weight, you definitely don't want to lose lean muscle tissue. So if you don't feed your body enough nutrients, then you're more than likely going to lose lean muscle, muscle tissue. All right, so that was Abby, and that was for a female. Now I'm going to do Carlos, Carlos Silva. He's also one of our NABF natural bodybuilders, and he's a certified personal training through, trainer through the NABF, and he's just recently purchasing a gym in Jamestown, I'm mean, Charlestown, Rhode Island. And what's the name of the gym? Uh, it is called Patton's Fitness Center, and uh, it is on Old Post Road in Charlestown, right in the center of town, uh, next to the post office. Um, looking forward to um, uh, taking the skills that I've acquired from the certification and the nutrition, uh, nutrition uh, aspects and uh, uh, incorporating uh, wellness uh, and uh, general nutrition. Um, to everybody down there uh, in, in, in our country, uh, as Al uh, stated, uh, everybody's on a starvation mode, so the only way to achieve uh, wellness and fitness uh, is uh, through proper nutrition and uh, uh, through uh, cardio and also weight training. And Carlos, over the last year, you made a lifestyle change where he's, he's made a commitment to natural bodybuilding over this past year, he's made tremendous results. And, uh, and he just chose his, his profession, and he's a very sincere person. I think he's going to do very, very well. So if you're ever in Charlestown, Rhode Island area, stop by and give him a visit. All right, so Carlos, he's a male bodybuilder, natural bodybuilder. So he automatically, I don't, I'm not concerned with his age. I'm just setting him on two, because that's what I do with all of my athletic males. And the sighting for a male on this particular theory with this skin dex caliper is the same sighting. So again, he makes a bicep. I have him contract the muscles. I can definitely feel the separation between fat and lean muscle tissue. Hold it, sink it, click, the, click it. Now I'm gonna have him flex his tricep. 
So I can definitely feel the separation. Relax. Then I'm going to go up on his shoulder blade about three quarters of an inch lower. And again, the tester should never sink more than a quarter of an inch of flesh beyond the inside of the, of the pinches, just so he can be consistent and they always have to go to the same siding. And Carlos come right on this side. All right, now he is a bodybuilder, so I always go between navel and hip bone at a 45 degree angle. If he wasn't an athlete, I would go above the hip bone. Again, the, tr the fat travels at this 45 degree angle, but in his case, I'm gonna go right here. And Carlos, this is off season, he's 9.7%, which is, is excellent, very lean. So for the non-athletic person, I mean, I see a lot of women come in here their first visit when I do the fitness evaluation, when they first join, they may look gorgeous, they may look very firm and fit and closed, but when, when I test their body fat, there's no tone in a lot of these women who look very thin, maybe 35, 38% body fat, which is unhealthy obese for women. So 35 and over is considered unhealthy obese for women, and men 22 and over is considered unhealthy obese. To prevent heart disease, they want all men definitely under 16%. So, and most athletic physiques are somewhere between 8 and 12%. You had to begin to get a really good athletic look. But for wellness, you definitely, all men which has a higher risk of heart disease should definitely be under 16% body fat. And I would suggest all women definitely try to get under 27% body fat. And that's going to be vary from person to person. And when people are on a very high wheat dairy, dairy diet, they just develop a very thick, solid layer of fat under the skin, and they can never get that real hard-toned athletic look. So if you're trying to get to that next level, not to say you can't have any wheat or dairy, but you should be, really be cautious of not having it at every meal. And um, that's basically what it takes. All right, we're going to break down from this segment, and now we're going to get into some weight training. And uh, first, we're going to start with some basic dumbbell exercises you can do at home if you don't want to join a gym.